What's up YouTube, Del here from Zephyr, and today I am bringing you a future update for one of my favourite decks, and that is of course Dark World, involving the brand new Themesmith archetype. Now these are all printed proxies, I will put the link to our Discord in the description down below, and in that Discord I will put the document where you can get your own paper copies of these, so I'll give you the document, you can print these out, these are all pre-sized for you, uh, and then you can physically test if you want to as well. So with all of that out of the way, I'm just going to dive headfirst into the profile. So make sure you smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe. If you want to see a test hand combo video for this particular deck, then make sure you get the video above 50 likes in the first 24 hours, and I'll be more than happy to bring that for you. So we're going to start off with the Dark World cards. Pretty straightforward and simple on this one. We're going with Triple Snow, Genta, and of course Rainbow. This doesn't really change no matter what version you are playing. We've then got Double Greffa. Now you'll actually find because of this brand new amazing card, Fiendsmith Sequenta, um, you're actually going to be shuffling back your materials in order to fusion summon quite a few times. So you can actually recycle your Greffa Dragon Lord of Dark Worlds quite a lot, which is kind of nice to make sure you don't banish it, and it means you're always going to have targets for your rainbow as well, which is really nice. And then of course we've got the one Cerulee, followed up by the one Silver, and in this version I am playing the one Lucian. Now the reason we're playing the one Lucian in this one is because being a level 6 is actually really helpful, because the main Fiendsmith monster, the Fiendsmith, is a level 6 as well, and this will help you get into some rank 6 plays, mainly your Triple D High Wave King Caesar, which can act as a form of interruption, as well as a way of being able to stop Nibiru. Very nice. So that's it for your Dark World lineup, and then of course you've got your Dangers, and the reason you've got your Dangers is it can actually help get you some synergy alongside the Fabled cards that we are playing, and of course the Fiendsmith in general. So with the Dangers we've got the one Bigfoot, double Nessie, uh, double Mothman, one Jackalope, and then of course one Chupacabra with an honorary danger in the form of Zal uh, Zalamander Catalyzer. Now, when I was playing Fiend, uh, Fabled Raven in this version, there's a couple of times where I'm like, okay, well, I kind of want to go back to my previous build where I used stuff like um, Brow and Beige, more so Beige, because it instantly gave you the ability to get into a level 7 Synchro, or if you discarded another one, you'd go into a level 8 Synchro. Now, ultimately, what I decided on this one is this build is not designed to be hugely Synchro focused. The idea is to utilize cards that are going to get you more advantage by being discarded to the graveyard so that you can then use the Fiendsmith cards to recycle the elements that you need and push into either their fusion monsters or your Dark Greffa fusion. For the main normal summon of the day, I am still playing the Quacky Mirror Guardian. Now, by the time we get this um, new support in the Fiendsmiths, the, the format may change. Droll and Lockburn may not be much of a thing. It could get hit on the ban list. There's a couple of things we just don't know as of yet. But for now, because my only other normal summon of the deck is Fabled Raven, which is very easily searchable in the deck, um, I thought that I would still stick with the Quacky Mirror Guardian. You can still also play Instant Fusion, but I kind of felt that I needed that additional space in the extra deck for this one. And we already know my personal preferences on playing Quacky Mirror Guardian and, of course, uh, Instant Fusion in order to deal with Droll and Lockbird. Previously, a lot of people have mentioned Doom Caliber Knight. Uh, the reason with Doom Caliber Knight and the reason you don't play it is because it is mandatory, so it will negate the first effect that's being activated, even your own. So you do need to be very, very careful, whereas Quacky Mirror Guardian lets you negate anything. And it's such a great card for going first or second, because if I open this up and normal summon it down, that's something that my opponent very rarely can stop unless they're playing something like a Solemn Warning. And when it gets to a point like that, it basically means that at any point when they try to chain to one of my effects, I have the ability to negate and then destroy it, which can be very very helpful against something like an Appaloosa. Keep it in mind, like I said, the format may change by the time we get these cards, so this is currently a build for here and now, so you can physically test it out, but most of the core elements will stay the same in the form of the Danger lineup and the Fiendsmith lineup. For the Fables, I didn't want to go too much down the Fabled route. I feel that if you're going to play more Fabled, you're probably going to change it rather than being a Dark World Fiendsmith deck, you're going to change it into a Fabled Fiendsmith deck, which works out just as well because the Fables will have a little bit more synergy with the whole deck because they are light fiends. Um, but the two that we go with is the Lorry and the Raven. So obviously Raven is very, very helpful in the Dark World strategy in general because you have that ability to discard the cards in your hand, trigger their effects, increase this level, and then open up the door for some Synchro plays as well. Laurie is actually quite a cool card in this one because you do have a card in the form of the Fiendsmith tra uh, Tractus, which is absolutely insane, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on. But the idea behind that is you can search out any light fiends. You can search out Fiendsmith, but if you've already got it, you can search out Laurie. You can discard the Laurie, and then straight away, this becomes the light fiend that you will need to make your Fiendsmith Link Monsters, which is really, really important. So if it's discarded in general to the graveyard, you get to special summon it. Really nice. 
And then of course the main card of the Fiendsmith um, engine. I highly expect this will probably be a secret when we get it in the TCG, big sad. Um, so this one is a level six and it has the following effect. You get to discard this card to add a Fiendsmith spell or trap from your deck to the hand and then you get to target a Fiendsmith, oh, sorry, so that's what the first effect. And then you get to target a Fiendsmith, a quick card that you control and one monster on the field, send them to the graveyard. And if this card is in your graveyard, you can shuffle one other light fiend monster from your graveyard into the deck or extra deck to special on this card. You can only use each effect once per turn. But the idea is that straight away, this can be a one card route into your rank six DDD higher wave King Caesar, which can be a very nice form of interruption. The main card that is going to search out is the Tractus. Now you can of course play, I'm just going to use the paper proxy because I haven't cut these out yet, the Sanctus, um, but I think this is a bit more for a pure version. Now Sanctus is if you control no face up monsters or all face up you control are light fiends, you get to special summon a fiend token um, and then that ultimately allows you to go into a one card combo to get into your triple D high wave King Caesar, uh, whereas with the Tractus it's kind of a two card, but the reason Tractus is so good is you add a light fiend monster from the deck to the hand then discard a card. So there's no cost on the discard, it's all part of the effect, so that will allow you, um, it means you don't lose any advantage when or hand advantage if they try and hand trap you on this. And on top of that, you can add in either your Fiendsmith, your Lorry, or even your um, Raven, and then discard a Dark World card, and then trigger off your Dark World card effect, which is insanely nice. It does also have an additional effect in the graveyard that you can banish it from the graveyard to fusion summon a Fiendsmith fusion monster from your extra deck, using monsters from your hand or field as material. Now keep in mind the Fiendsmith fusion monsters do specifically require light fiend monsters, so you're not going to be able to recycle back in your um, your Dark World monsters with this one, but you will be able to with the Link 2, and I feel the Link 2 is just going to become a generic fiend Link monster, it's just that good. And then for the Dark World cards, we are playing two Gate of the Dark World, one Archives, one Card Destruction, Corridor, Accession, and Talents. I'm highly considering putting Frost back in just because Tractus is a normal spell card. So you could technically set this over the back of Frost. Um, but I kind of went with this line art. I think it works out quite nicely. Again, you'll adapt it to your personal playstyle. Some people will prefer to Corridor instead of the Talents. I quite like having a card in here that will punish my opponent. Um, and then just because I have so many cards that don't mind being triggered in the graveyard or activating the graveyard, Card Destruction is just such a really good card that can help you out. So that's it for the entire list. Like I said, I've tried to make it more predominantly Dark Worlds um, than anything else and maintain its own strategy, which is why the Fiendsmiths aren't... I mean, they don't have a huge amount of main deck cards right now. It's literally just the spells and one monster, um, but it's the extra deck that really kind of shines quite a bit. So I'll start off with the Fiendsmith cards themselves. You start off with the one Link 1 Fiendsmith Requiem. This card's absolutely nutty. It requires one Light Fiend monster, and you can only special summon it once per turn. During the main phase, you get a quick effect to tribute this card to special summon a Fiendsmith monster from your hand or deck. Um, you can target one non-link light fiend monster you control, equip this card from your field, uh, sorry, from your field or graveyard to that monster you control as an equip spell, and it gains 600 attack. So the idea is that straight away you would go for your Fiendsmith, you'd discard the Fiendsmith. In the one card combo, you would go for your Sanctus. In the two card combo or the 1.5 card combo, you go for ta um you go for the Tractus. The Tractus then obviously would allow you to discard, and the idea is that if you wanted to go off of the Tractus, you'd search out your Fiend Lorry, discard the Fiend Lorry, summon it back, Fiend Lorry goes into Requiem, Requiem can then tribute itself off to summon out the Fiendsmith from the deck. You would have the Fiendsmith in the graveyard, which could shuffle the Requiem back into the extra deck and summon itself back, and you overlay both of those into a DDD higher wave King Caesar. So, very nice kind of pre-nib protection. And then the insane card is the Fiendsmith Cinquentia. This card's nuts. Two monsters, including a Light Fiend monster. So basically, you just need one Light Fiend monster. Um, and then on top of that, during your main phase, you can fusion summon a Fiend Fusion monster from your extra deck by shuffling its materials from your graveyard into the deck. You can target one non-link Light Fiend monster you control, equip this card from your field or graveyard to that monster you control as an equip spell with the additional effect. Your opponent cannot target the equip monster with card effects. You can only use each effect once per turn. Now the reason this is so good is because more times than not, the boss monsters you're going to want to equip them to are going to be the Fiendsmith fusion monsters, starting off with the Lacrimosa. So this one requires two light fiend monsters. Monsters your opponent controls lose 600 attack. Keep in mind if you're equipped with this, this is going to get buffed up to 3k as well, which is really nice. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. If this card is fusion summoned, you get to target a light fiend monster in your graveyard or banished. Either add it to the hand or special summon it, so you get to loot back your fiend raven. Very, very nice. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can shuffle one other light fiend monster from your graveyard into the deck or extra deck and inflict 1200 damage to your opponent. 
And then the main boss monster is the Dai's Ari. Uh, so this one specifically requires the Fiendsmith plus two light fiend monsters. So it gains a quick effect to negate the effects of numbers of face-up cards on the field equal to the total link ratings of the link monsters equipped to this card. So obviously if you've gone through both of these in order to make it, you equip this to this. This now has the ability to negate three face-up cards. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can shuffle one other Light Fiend monster from your graveyard into the deck or extra deck, then tie it one card in the field and send it to the graveyard. So again, when you get a Requiem equipped to this, it then goes up to a 34. And then on top of that, if you're equipped with Sequentia, uh, it's also going to give it a nice little ability that it can't be targeted. And then the only other card that we now play because of the Fiendsmith is, of course, the Triple D High Wave King Caesar or Wave High King Caesar, uh, just because it's very easy to make. Two level six Fiend monsters, which is why Lucian can come into play as well. And then for the generic like Dark World cards that we're going to be playing is obviously you're going to be playing your Greffa, followed up by your number 60 Daguerres. You don't have to play this one, but there are times when you do need to get into a rank 4 that will help you trigger some effects and give you a bit more draw power as well. Then for the Link Monsters, of course, pretty stand on this one. We've gone with SP Little Knight with your IP Mascarina, which is going to get you into cards like Muckcracker sometimes. Uh, you've also got Akashic, Appalooza, and of course Underworld Goddess. So you can see the five slots that we've taken up because of the new Fiendsmith cards going into the extra deck, including the Triple D High Wave King. Um, you're then going to be sacrificing stuff like your Zelantis lock. You're going to be sacrificing stuff like Ceruja if you want to. I don't feel you need a lot more of aggression in the extra deck because you're going to get that with synchro plays and just general other options. But that then gives you the ability to be a little bit flexible. Speaking of synchro options, I went with Chaos Angel and Baron de Fleur. Uh, obviously, the only way that you can really make these is you get a level six, which is your Fiendsmith plus your um, Raven, and Raven would need to discard two cards. Or it's just Raven plus Greffar, Raven plus Rainbow without even discarding any cards gets you this. The same can also get you Chaos Angel, but the best thing about this is you'll be making this with a light and a dark, so it gives you the ability that all Synchro monsters you control are unaffected by monster effects, and your dark monsters cannot be destroyed by, or all your monsters can't be destroyed by battle. More times than not, you're happier just making it with all darks. Uh, if you wanted to go more Synchro focused, that's when I would then consider start playing beige and everything more, and you'd probably turn this into, rather than a predominant Dark World deck, you would then probably put in Dark World cards that will benefit off of being discarded from the back of the Fables. So you'd add in stuff like Fabled Raven, you'd then play like one beige, um, or a couple of beiges with snows to search them out, and then when you're using your other fabled cards that all have effects that can be discarded to either summon or summon back from the graveyard, you name it, you'd focus more down that route, and that would give you more synchro options should you need to or should you want to as well. So this is the best thing about the deck is if you wanted to, you can make it more fusion focused, you can make it more synchro focused now. You also have the ability to play more rank sixes, more rank eights that I don't currently play. Um, the best rank 8 of course to play would be your Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord, as well as playing stuff like your Sky Slayer Typhoon. You can also consider uh, Degueres and everything else like that. So it does give you a nice little bit of flexibility. Um, it does take up 5 slots minimum in the extra in my opinion. I think it'd be crazy not to be playing the Triple D High Wave King. I feel that playing the Fusion Monsters is also a no-brainer. Um, I was even tempted when I was trying to put this together of even considering playing uh, Requiem and Sequenta at more than one each. But I know you can recycle them quite easily. It's just one of them times where if your opponent stops them being recycled, you could be in a little bit of a trouble. Um, but I do kind of like the idea behind it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to show you the combo at the end of the video. I'll show you the combo now. I'll show you the one card uh, Fiendsmith combo. And then I'll explain how if you then turn it into a 1.5 card combo, it can become even more effective for the Dark World strategy as well. So back in a second. So the one card combo very simply involves the Fiendsmith. Now this one doesn't involve the Dark World engine, it will become a 1.5 card combo if it does involve the Dark World engine, and the idea is you just open up Fiendsmith plus any other Dark World. You can also directly open up the Tractus, but it will mean you won't get the rank 6 play that you're going to be looking to get into, which is why you want to specifically be getting into Fiendsmith. So you're going to start off by discarding the Fiendsmith, this will then allow you to add the Tractus. At this point here you're going to activate the Tractus to let you add a Light Fiend from the deck to the hand. And the one you're going to want to go for if you are keeping it as a one card combo, keep that in mind, we're keeping it as a one card combo, you're going to want to go for your Lorry. You'll then resolve Tractus by discarding the Lorry, Lorry will then come back onto the board. You'll then be able to turn Lorry into your Requiem. You'll then use Requiem's effect to tribute it off, and this will then allow you to special summon a Fiendsmith from the deck. You will then use the Fiendsmith in the graveyard to shuffle back either the Requiem or the Lorry. I personally like to put the Requiem back, and this will then summon the Fiendsmith out. 
Now, obviously, at this exact moment in time, because you do have the Tractus Graveyard effect as well, is technically, you do have the ability, while you've got these on play, if we rewind it a little bit here, while you do have it this way, you could technically activate Tractus to banish both of these, uh, sorry, shuffle both of these back, and then go into the Fusion Monster. So you have the ability to go into your Lacrimosa, or of course, if you wanted to, you could activate the tractors to do all three, and that will then put you into the Diazari, but obviously you don't have anything more to equip to it. So there's loads of different kind of flexible spots onto it. The most defensive route would be, of course, to be ending like this and overlaying both of these into your Triple D High Wave King. Um, keeping in mind, we haven't used our normal summon. We've still got four more cards to be playing around with. If any of those are a Dark World card, like I said, they will then become your discard fodder instead of the lorry. Um, and then the idea is you just need to get a Light Fiend monster onto the board, but you're going to be pushing your plays through to it. Um, and then when you're adding a Light Fiend monster off the tractors rather than going for the lorry, if you've got that Dark World to discard, you can then go into your Raven, and then you're just going to be building up your board off the back of that as well, because that can then become your normal summon. So it's a very, very basic, very, very simple one card combo to kind of get everything ticking and get everything going. Uh, I can't wait until we get these cards. I'm really hoping that these are not going to be high rarity cards, but from the looks of the set and the way that it's going, they're probably going to be on the higher end, especially with a decent amount of hype behind them, just because they are just generic for theme decks. So not just Dark Worlds, but they can be utilized, like I said, with Fables. They can also be utilized with, I think people are considering like Live Twins, Evil Twins as well. Uh, it's just a really kind of cool engine. It doesn't really lock you into anything, which is also quite nice. And on the downside, also quite uh, disappointing because then it means that I feel that engines like this that have no restrictions to them eventually will one day be slightly broken. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's given you a bit of an insight. Like I said, if you want to see a dedicated test and combo video, then make sure you get a video above 50 likes in the first 24 hours and I'll be more than happy to bring that for you. But for now, don't forget to check out the Discord link below where you can pick up your own document which will have all of the proxies ready for you to uh, print out and cut out and then test physically yourselves as well. For now, as absolutely always, stay safe and of course, happy dueling.